When our government has information on a known extremist, and that information is not shared and acted upon as it should have been, so that this extremist boards a plane with dangerous explosives that could have cost nearly 300 lives, a systemic failure has occurred. And I consider that totally unacceptable. That was President Obama reacting to the attempted terrorist attack on Christmas Day. Teddy, he called it a systemic failure, totally unacceptable, obviously not pulling any punches. Well, President Obama is still in Hawaii, but Dick Cheney and the Republicans are going to make sure that he gets no vacation. Top Line starts right now. Welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. This is the last official show of 2009. 2009, rather. I'm Rachel Martin. And I'm Teddy Davis. Each day we bring you the news, views, and issues that matter to you. With that, Teddy, what is your first top line of the day? Cheney rips Obama. Former Vice President Dick Cheney told Politico that President Obama is trying to pretend that the United States is not really at war. The former Vice President goes on to say that he disagrees sharply with President Obama over the decision to close Guantanamo. He also criticizes Obama for wanting to use a civilian court rather than a military tribunal to try one of the masterminds of the 9-11 terrorist attack. The Democrats are coming back and saying Obama is actually pursuing terrorists all over the world. But there are some real legal differences between the approaches that the two sides are using. And this debate is far from over. Indeed. I mean, lest you thought Dick Cheney was going to slip off into <laughs> the night, into a quiet retirement, it seems like he's become the new nemesis of the Obama administration. I'm sure we're going to hear more from the former vice president in 2010. Transfer time out. The senior Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee, Diane Feinstein of California, is saying that no more Guantanamo Bay detainees should be transferred to the country of Yemen in the wake of that uh, thwarted terrorist plot on Christmas Day that was allegedly hatched in the country of Yemen. Diane Feinstein releasing a statement saying Guantanamo Bay detainees should not be released to Yemen at this time. It is too unstable. Yeah, it certainly seems like those transfers to Yemen might be one of the most tangible changes in policy that we see coming out of the Christmas Day bomber incident. Well, and we've seen all this attention on Afghanistan and Pakistan and Waziristan. You can be assured we're going to see more reporting, more focused uh, reporting out of Yemen in the coming days, I'm sure. No question, no question. Changing the process. The DNC is holding a meeting today. They are planning to announce a change in the way that the party conducts its presidential nominating process. What the change is going to do is reduce the influence of elected officials and party leaders. This story has been overshadowed quite a bit right now. We're not going to really feel the change in 2012 when Obama's running for re-election, but look for it in 2016. Definitely something to keep our eyes out on. And lastly, the beginning of the body scans. Today we heard news out of Schiphol Airport. That's the major international airport in the Netherlands. In the next three weeks, they're going to be rolling out the implementation of these full body scans. This is something that has been a flashpoint of debate in the United States, whether or not to use these full body scans, Teddy, that uh, a lot of privacy rights advocates are saying are a violation of civil liberties, while you've got people uh, advocating tighter security in the wake of this thwarted terrorist attack, saying, listen, we got to do this. We've got to make sure that these kinds of security breaches don't happen again. Uh, these are, this is a debate that we're likely to see much more of, this tension between security and privacy rights. Yeah, real tension there with security and liberty on this one. Let's, at this point, bring in our intrepid reporter, Yanji <laughs> Denise, White House correspondent, who is reporting to us from Honolulu, Hawaii. It's a tough job, lady, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> hey, it looks a lot better than it is. We've had a lot of news out here. The president had promised a news-free vacation. He did that also when we went to Martha's Vineyard. You know, whenever he does that, he tempts the news gods and he guarantees that something will come up. In this case, obviously, something very serious came up. The Obama administration has had to deal with it. They waited three days before he came out in front uh, to address the Christmas Day uh, attempted attack. And at this point now, obviously, we've seen him two days in a row. We expect we could see him tomorrow as the initial reviews come out, uh, those preliminary reviews, one on the terrorist watch list proceedings, the other, of course, on airport screenings. Yanji, we heard the president earlier talk about what he characterized as systemic failures related to this thwarted attack. Any idea, any word you're hearing from administration officials about what they would like to see as possible systemic fixes? 
Well, it's very interesting because the president obviously cited a mix of human failure and systemic failures. We're interested to know on how the system itself has changed uh, or how they plan to change it, what holes they will identify. The president and also uh, one of the senior administration officials speaking to us on background yesterday had said that there are bits of information. These were not complete information, but tidbits, if you will, that should have been connected. And had they been brought together in the appropriate way, the president came out very strongly yesterday and said the suspect would not have been able to board that flight. Obviously, he was able to. Uh, we're not quite sure exactly what will come out tomorrow. Obviously, it's a very quick timeline. The review started on Sunday, so to have something preliminary already on Thursday. But obviously, the White House is trying to get in front of this and change the tone. On Sunday, you had his Homeland Security chief come out and say that the system worked. Of course, she clarified later that she meant the system worked once the suspect boarded the plane. The president taking a very different approach when he came out to address the public yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yanji, how is the White House going to respond to the criticism from former Vice President Dick Cheney? Well, it's interesting because there's a lot of pushback from the White House. They point out that after the Richard Reid incident, of course, that's the alleged the, the shoe bomber, if you will, back in December of 2001. After that, uh, President George W. Bush, Bush waited seven days to respond. They say Mr. Obama was waiting for information to come in, that he responded appropriately. So, you know, we'll see a lot of back and forth between this White House and the last one. And Jim, I'm going to ask you to take a little bit of the long view now. We're coming up on the end of... 2009, as someone who's covered this White House for the past year, this administration, do you think that Pre President Obama is where he wants to be right now as we approach New Year's Eve, the, the conclusion of 2009? Oh, absolutely not, Rachel. I mean, you saw plummeting poll numbers throughout the year. This president has had to deal with challenges on so many fronts. Take the economy. Obviously, he had two major government expenditures with TARP and with the Recovery Act. We're talking about 800 and 700 billion dollars, respectively, there. Uh, the economy, obviously, not where he wants it to be. While it is supposed to be on the upswing, we still see unemployment rate in the double digits. That's the domestic front. Uh, Health care looks like it's going to pass, but he doesn't get his public option, something that, obviously, he had pushed so hard for. A lot of people feel like this bill is watered down, and at the same time, Democrats may pay a penalty for it uh, in the upcoming midterm elections. Then, of course, you have internationally, we're dealing now with a terrorism threat. The president uh, has not closed Guantanamo. That's a campaign promise that he will miss. And obviously, Guantanamo, now what you were talking about in regards to Yemen, becomes a much bigger liability. So the president, on basically all fronts, has so much to deal with. I don't think he's where he wants to be at all. Lastly, a question about tone. So much of, of the Obama campaign was promises to change the tone in Washington. We've obviously seen a lot of partisanship in this past year when it comes to the health care reform debate. Uh, what's your take on that? Do you think this administration has been successful in that effort to change the tone, whatever, whatever that means, whether domestically or internationally? Well, you've got to give the president credit for changing the tone, if you will, internationally. I mean, he's traveled more than any other president internationally in his first year uh, in history. That is very significant, obviously making a major push to extend an open hand to the Muslim world, to Iran, making that major speech in Cairo, uh, but also when he accepted the Nobel Peace Prize, reminding the world that in certain times war can be a path to peace. So the president sort of struggling with that as well, but, but really even in terms of some some of some areas that we've had some contention with. Take Russia, for instance. We had uh, the president there saying that the reset button uh, has been pushed. So obviously, all of that is very positive. But you know, every president, it seems, comes to Washington hoping to change the tone, saying that they will rule from a govern from a bipartisan post. Uh, we saw that with George W. Bush. Obviously, that didn't happen, and it appears. Obviously, with health care, with the wars, with, uh, with this new terror debate, that bipartisanship is uh, hard fought, hard won, rather. <laughs> Yanji Denise, I know you're from Hawaii, Yanji, and I hope you're able to take advantage of, of being home for a little while. You've been hard at work, so we appreciate <laughs> all of your reporting from Honolulu, Hawaii, where the president is vacationing right now. Thank you, Yanji.